Hello, this is Story Wilson with rswsolutions.com. This is the Allcoms software package. Now, the Allcoms software tool is paired specifically with the Allcoms hardware device. Now, both of these, the software download and the hardware device, are available on my website at rswsolutions.com. Once you've downloaded the software and gone through the installation steps, this is the software interface that you'll be working with. It's a single executable application. So you go ahead and start your vehicle, plug in the Allcoms hardware tool to the OBD2 port, and then plug in the Allcoms hardware USB to the USB port. Once the USB is plugged in, you'll hear the USB enumeration sound. And then we can move through, agree to the license agreement, and move through to the vehicle class that we want to work with. Now, currently, the Allcoms tool is still under development. Even though it's available for purchase, it's still under development in the sense that I will continually be making updates to the software as time progresses. But right now, version 1 is complete. And version 1 is very stable and ready to start, and it's ready to be available to the public. So... The most functional vehicle I have is the L322 Range Rover, or the Mark III Range Rover. I'm going to show you some of the functionality we have here. So, in all vehicle classes, there's two main functions. There's the reading and clearing of faults. That's one function. And then there are, you know, there's the changing of settings. So, for example, reading and clearing of faults would be available on all the different vehicle systems. The brake system, the headlight system, transmission, engine, and so forth. And changing settings would be available on things, for example, like the air suspension, or in this case, the uh, body module functions. Now, for example, if we go back to reading faults, this is the way the system reading faults works like this. You will open a communication session, and when that session is open, you will see down here on the bottom that you'll see the open communication eliminated and transmit receive traffic going back and forth, and you'll see a link light. So if we try this, for example, open, okay, transmission receives going on in the background, and we're linked. Now, here's some information on the, uh, this is a status message from the ABS computer. Currently, it's not actually deciphered. It's just in its raw format. Eventually, it will be deciphered. It'll tell you, you know, for example, usually in this message, there's information like when the device was manufactured, for example, and the serial number of the device. But we have communications open. I'm going to read the faults. Reading the faults, and we have no faults. No fault codes came back. We can clear the faults, and we can close our communication session. Done. You can also print out the faults that are listed here. Uh, in kind of a summary report, it'll be sent to the printer, and you can simply remove them as well. Um, let's find a system that has faults. Uh, usually I have faults in my engine immobilizer system. So same as before, we'll open communication. Communication's open. We have transmit and receive traffic. We're linked. We'll read the faults. Give it five, ten seconds to communicate. And there we go. Faults returned. Q2 random code tolerance increased. I can clear that fault and we can close our communication session. So those are the four steps that are involved when working with the Allcoms tool. You open a session, you read the faults, you clear the faults, and then you close. Simple as that. So right now the faults are cleared. So we can also go on to changing some of the system settings. Uh, air the air suspension calibration will soon be added, very soon. It's just a tricky kind of protocol to figure out. Right now I have the body control functions are available. So similar to, to before, you open communications, communications are open, transmit and receive is going on in the background, and the link light right here is listing the current settings for each of these functions. So um, the interior lights gradual trigger. What that means is that when you arm and disarm your vehicle security system with the lock, with the, with, with the key fob, how do the lights illuminate? Do they come on instantly or do they gradually slowly come on and go off? I like that to be on. Alarm, emergency siren, arming with hazards. And I actually turned these on the day before. I wanted to see how they worked. And, you know, I'm not a huge fan of having my alarm arm and disarm with a beep. So I can simply turn this off. 
and now you see it, the setting is off and next time I run the vehicle when I arm it's not going to beep at me so you can customize a few of these things to your liking uh, I also plan to add a significant <coughs> increase in these number of features in the very near future uh, one of the one of the features that I really like is the ability to prevent the steering column from automatically retracting and extending every time the vehicle uh, is started and stopped. I, I think that just wears out the steering column. And that's a common failure point. So it's nice to be able to turn those kinds of functions on and off. So that's a quick overview of the system. Uh, there's a few other things up here. Um, you can check for updates, which I think is a great feature. Um, and that will automatically go to the website and check to see what version you're running against what version is the most current. And it will automatically, in the background, update the software. No fuss, no muss. Um, that's about it. I'm very happy with the software. I hope you will be too. Please feel free to contact me through email at www.rswsolutions.com. Thanks.